Hello, this is Martin from ML Modules. In this series of videos, I want to talk about the sequencers I uh, released recently and introduce them, their functionality, and also in some additional videos, give some patching tips to them. In this first video, I want to start with the analog sequencer. This one is modeled after kind of the standard modular sequencer. It's a three-row, 16-step sequencer. And as you can see in the picture, it actually consists of three identical rows of sequencers. Each of those rows has a transport section on the left-hand side, a what I could call the value section in the middle, and an output section on the right-hand side. You might notice that the sequencer does not contain an internal clock but needs to be triggered by an external signal, giving it more flexibility to generate more complex rhythms. So let's have a look at those um, trigger inputs, what they do. The four inputs on the left are an uh, input for a forward, backward trigger, a random trigger, and a reset trigger. So any trigger impulse on the forward, or as I call it here, right input, just progresses the sequencer to the next step. And once you're at the end, it just jumps back to the beginning. An impulse on the left trigger just goes backwards. Then we have the random trigger here, which triggers a random segment of the sequencer. And lastly, we have the reset trigger, which puts this uh, sequencer back in the reset state. It should be noted here that the reset state is special in the sense that it's not any of the steps of the sequence, but it's basically before the first step or after the last step, which means that out of the reset state, the first trigger impulse goes to the first active step, while a trigger impulse on the backwards trigger goes to the last available step. I say available step because we come in a minute to the selection of steps to the range, so we can restrict the steps which are available for sequencing. When the sequencer goes into the reset state, it keeps the voltage of the last step it used. And also it should be noted that reset can also be enabled by clicking on the red reset button underneath the CV input. The next three controls are the min, max and stride controls. They determine the range of steps the sequencer can walk through. So with the min, we see here that if we turn it up, that the green LEDs move to the right, or better said, that the LEDs on the left go dark. The max goes from the right hand side. And let me just start a sequence so we can see what or hear what the effect is. So, for instance, we can restrict the sequence to eight steps step sequence, we can also then increase the minimum value, so you can see that this is quite a flexible approach to generate various sequences on the fly in a live situation. The next control here, which is stride, determines how many steps are progressed with every impulse on the forward. So in the moment, stride is on a minimum, which means one. So we go one step forward. If I increase stride, let me just stop that and go back to reset. So we see we go forward by one step. If I increase stride to the next, we forward by two steps each. If we go to three, 
we go forward by three steps and so on. So let's start that again. Again, with this you can generate different melodies out of the same material which is programmed into the sequencer. And all three of those can be controlled by CV input. And later when we look at the patch tricks, we will use an example where we control. We can just do that now as well. We can patch up the last row, for instance, oops, to the minimum, set it to a four step sequence, and also control the maximum. So we see now here that using different values we can get different ranges of the um, of the sequence and we can also control that by a clock for instance let's do that every eight steps section of the sequencer is where we actually set the voltages for every step. For each step there are three controls. The knob on the top which selects the voltage, the LED button in the middle which indicates which step is active but also acts as a button with which we can activate or jump to a specific step and at the bottom the control for whether to play the step, skip the step, or play a pause on that step. By clicking on the LED buttons we can jump to a specific step and once the step is active then the voltage selected with the knob is directly um, connected to the output of that step. So we can use that to tune the step and select the values we want for our sequence. When the mode select switches in the up position, the note is played and it produces a gate and trigger signal. If moved to the down position, the note is completely skipped and the sequencer goes immediately to the next uh, step. In the middle position, the note is played but no gate and trigger signals are produced. If you want to really produce a held note, then you need to insert another sample and hold um, module, which you trigger by a signal from the trigger output. The last section of each row is the output section. It contains the CV outputs for the node, the pitch, the gate and the trigger. Furthermore, there is a transpose input and a selection of the range of the node values from plus minus one volts, plus minus two volts, plus minus five volts and zero to ten volts. Remember, one volt is one octave, so the smallest range plus minus one um, is a two octave range, then a four octave range, 
and the other two modes are mainly thought for control voltages rather than for node information. selector and in the lower setting it is a semitone quantization the middle setting is no quantization and the upper setting is octave quantization so I will just demonstrate that as you can hear now it is a semitone quantized now there is no quantization as you can hear section also contains one input a CV jack and that is the transpose input and a voltage connected to the transpose will as the name suggests transpose the whole sequence we are playing we can either use a voltage from an external keyboard or in this case here the internal 12 key or we also could use a sequencer in order to um, control the transpose of the sequence. The remaining two outputs are gate signals which indicate whether the first or the last step of a row is active. They can be used for instance to progress the next row whenever one row has cycled back to the first step. Let me first remove the sample and hold again. You will see in a minute why I'm doing that now. And once we have done that we can connect the first gate output to the next input of the second row and with that control the progressing of the second sequencer. Let me now put the sample and hold back into the control signal path. You will notice that now the first note of the sequence is always wrong because the switching of the transposition comes a little bit too late. This is due to those one sample delays which you get in digital emulations. In this case we can rescue the situation by using the last output instead of the first output. If we do that then we see that with the sample and hold in place the sequence sounds right.
The last thing to discuss are those little buttons in the transport section of the sequencer. They allow to initialize, randomize or copy and paste the values and the uh, gate settings in a row of the sequencer. The color coding is that the red buttons correspond to the voltage values while the blue buttons correspond to the uh, gate settings while the white button for copy copies both of them into an internal buffer. The paste buttons paste then either the voltage values, the pitch values or the gate values into the corresponding row on which the uh, buttons have been pressed. It should be noted that the copy and paste also works in between different instances of the analog sequences. So if you have a second instance running, you can copy one row from one sequencer into another row of another sequencer. And you even can transfer settings from the analog sequencer to the memory sequencer and vice versa. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful to work with the sequencer and yeah, please watch the space for more videos and examples to come up in the future. Thank you and bye, see you soon.